welcome to Blue Park News. Did you know that there is a piece of news out there that is so big, so astounding, so monumental that it blows the doors off any gaming news that has ever come before? It literally blew my mind when I read this article. And it is something that you won't believe. Pigs can play video games with their snouts, scientists find. Pigs can play video games with their snouts. Wow, wow, wow. Oh, it's, it's emotional. Ah. I just thought that was the, the way to play. I've been playing with my nose for years, but no. Look, seriously, honestly, it probably is some some groundbreaking envi um, biological research that has gone into this, and it definitely is important for biology. Um, but yeah, apparently pigs can play video games. They also get addicted to them just like you do, um, because apparently when they were playing some of the video games, even their reward, when it got broken and didn't release the reward, reward they still wanted to play video games. So confirmed, video games more addictive than crack. Okay, stay away kids. Now onto the proper meat of the video. Ubisoft addresses the possibility of $70 games in 2021, something that nobody wants at all. Um, that nobody wants to touch, nobody wants to talk about. Now, I'm not going to go full Jim Sterling on this because they already have some amazing videos on this and they have got a lot better quality videos than I have. But let's talk about the statements that they have put in this article that are kind of justifications from multimillionaire CEOs as to why their video games need to be more expensive. And we're going to just take them apart, part by part. So, during a Q&A session following its third quarter earnings call, Ubisoft was asked whether players should expect a price hike in the company's next fiscal year, which spans April 21 to March 22. Without giving a definitive answer one way or the other, Ubisoft CFO, Frederick Dujouet, apparently, admitted that the company is evaluating its game prices hasn't made a final call. In terms of pricing, we've been analysing the competitive dynamics of the last quarter and we are still looking at new opportunities, but we have not made any decision. So I don't want to go full ham on this. I don't want to go full ham against them because they haven't said they're going to do this, yet we already do see this creeping in. Video games are getting more expensive, definitely, but that isn't the real cost of the issue. That isn't the real issue why people are annoyed and these CEOs don't seem to understand that. So let's have a look at what else they put in the article. Ubisoft is far from the first major player. So take two CEO Strauss Zelnick has twice spoken out in support of the idea, telling Protocol in September that we deliver a much, much bigger game for $60 or $70 than we delivered for $60 10 years ago, right? You're telling that to the wrong person because actually three of my favorite games of all time came out 10 years ago. Let's have a look at what games came out in 2011. So the three that are on my favorite games of all time sort of list are Skyrim, Battlefield 3, and Dark Souls all came out in 2011. Now you're telling me that those games are a lot smaller than some of the games that have been released recently. I would argue that that is complete and utter horseshit, basically. If you've ever played Dark Souls 1, you will have got a lot of hours out of it. I've definitely played at least um, 150 to 200 hours on that game. Skyrim, that would be way higher than that. Now I had about 100 days of gameplay in Battlefield 3. So you're telling me that the games today have more content or bigger. That might be an argument. Honestly, that might be true. So Red Dead Redemption came out in 2010 and Red Dead Redemption 2 a couple of years ago, a year ago, can't remember when. But apparently Red Dead Redemption 2 is still reasonably bigger than Red Dead Redemption 1. Yet to say that the games are just so much bigger now is kind of disingenuous, I think. And on top of that, all of the games are cut into little pieces now and released individually. Now, Dark Souls 1, it had DLC, yes. But the DLC added huge amount of hours to the game. And the Artorias DLC is widely recognized as 
one of the best DLCs in the whole of From Software, in my opinion anyway. Now, Skyrim's DLC, again, added a huge amount to the game, and this was all stuff that was built afterwards. This wasn't stuff that was in the game to start with, and they chopped it out. Now, I know this argument is old and has been going on for a long time, but it goes without saying that to say that they deliver a much bigger game now for the, for the same price is ridiculous. And we'll get into that in just a second. Now, of course, we've already seen a couple of $70 PS5 games, including Demon Souls. <sighs> Demon Souls. Demon Souls. <laughs> When did that game come out? 2009, that game came out. That game came out in 2009. And if I go on eBay right now, I could buy that game for around a 10, 10 pounds. You give someone Dark Souls, generally they're gonna be happy with it. Who, who People who like From Software and like that type of game. You give them a remastered Demon Souls, they're going to be happy with it. But it is absolutely absurd to charge 70, pounds 70 pounds in the uk i don't know it's 70 dollars probably in the us 70 pounds in the uk which is more than 70 dollars by the way for a game that is 12 years old 11 years old that is absolutely ludicrous now i don't care what they say i don't care whether they rebuilt all the textures from the ground up because that's what they say they did it doesn't matter that game is still 12 years old and all they did is reskin it. Okay, they could have add a few they could have added a few things like the Final Fantasy 7 remake. It still does not justify that price by a long way. That is absolutely ludicrous in my opinion. But let's hear what the CEO Jim Ryan has to say about the fairness of video games being 70 pounds. Yes, I do consider 70 pound games fair, he said. If you measure the hours of entertainment provided by a video game, such as Demon's, Demon's Souls, again, 12 year old game, compared to any other form of entertainment, I think that it's a very straightforward comparison to draw. Yeah, okay. Okay, okay, Jim. We are gonna, it's very straightforward. I, I agree, it's very straightforward. Let's compare then. How much is a book? About £10, maybe £20 for a brand new hardback. How many hours do you get out of a book? I would say, depending on the book, of course, if it's a tiny book, not, not too many. If it's a bigger book, if it's Game of Thrones, it's going to be around the same amount of hours as a video game. And it's between seven times, seven times less the price if it's £10, you know, for uh, three and a half times less the price if it's £20. So, okay. That's the first form of entertainment that is cheaper than video games. How about YouTube and Twitch? More appropriate for the, for the gamers out there. YouTube and Twitch are free. Little did you know, Jim, this, in fact, this video is free. You can watch this video for free. It took me a few hours to make. I put it on YouTube and it was free for you to watch. So once again, another form of entertainment that is cheaper video games now the only one that you can really think might be more expensive is a brand new film or tv show but i have a slight feeling that you're a bit of a boomer jim because there's these things called netflix and disney plus and amazon prime now where you can buy a subscription for a tenner a month and basically you get thousands of hours of, fr of free well you get thousands of hours of content for a tenner a month if you wanted to, that is a lot, lot, lot cheaper than video games. So where are you getting this terribly boomer idea that all the new film and TV shows are so expensive to go and see? And they produce a lot more value for the hours. Because it's not true for people who are my age and younger or around this age. It is just not true. Now, why is it so popular that people watch Let's Plays so much? They want to see what the game's like. But how many Let's Plays have you watched at home and you haven't bought the game? It's because it's hours of entertainment that you get for free without having to pay for it. Now, Jim, if you understood that, you would understand that much of the industry, much of the entertainment industries are moving towards that. They're moving towards free content to content that is easy to access and they make money 
off smaller things. Now, I don't necessarily think that's a good thing. Look at Call of Duty Warzone, for example, probably the biggest game of last year, um, along with Fortnite. You know, Warzone is free, and you pay for cosmetics. But how much money have they made? If they'd have charged £70, no one would play that game. Okay, a few people might, because it's Call of Duty. But it would not have the same amount of people playing if it was £70. Now, it's not right to say that all games should be £70. But let's take one of your own games, Jim. One of your own. God of War. When that came out, it was 40 or 50 quid in the shop. Do you know how much money you made with God of War, Jim? Budget, this is just reportedly, of course, so take it with a grain of salt. Reportedly made 500 million in 20, um, at the st by the start of 2019. It cost between 50 and 100 million dollars to make. This game that doesn't rely on microtransactions, doesn't rely on cosmetics, doesn't rely on DLC, and was reasonably priced when it came out, has made a huge profit margin. Where else do you see those profit margins, Jim? In any other industry, if you went into the aerospace industry, you would not see that profit margin. If you went into the car industry, if you went into any other industry, only software and only games and entertainment make those sort of margins. And you're complaining here that the price of your games is too cheap. That is absolutely ludicrous. Now, I'm not going to completely hack this to pieces. And say that games should be £50 or £40, new games, AAA games, for the rest of time. Inflation exists, we know that. But it wouldn't be so insulting for these guys to say this. If they didn't fill their games with microtransactions, live services, and remove and cut bits out at the start. If you want to raise the prices of games to £70, I'm actually okay with that. If you give me the full game and you give me a great experience, it would probably be worth it. And I wouldn't be so angry. But we know you're not going to do that, Jim. We know that. We're not stupid. Look, before you give, before you sell most of your games now, not just Sony, most AAA, AAA franchises, you have cut away bits to add as DLC for premium editions. You have a season pass for DLC that's not even created yet. And don't get me started on the ethics of that. Um, and then you add microtransactions to nearly every single game. And now you're crying to us because the games are too cheap. Yet, the price of video games is not £40, £50 pounds anymore. It's £40 and £50 pounds plus all the microtransactions, plus the DLC, plus the season passes. So to tell this lie that games are still £40 pounds to buy is ridiculous. I would argue that they're more than £70 pounds new if you want the full experience for most AAA games now. So... This argument's kind of skewed, I would say. As I said, I would be happy with them being £70 if they would take all the other shit out. But I suppose that's never going to happen, and we know it's not. We know you're not going to stop raking in the cash on microtransactions until some huge collapse comes, until all the consumers wake up and refuse to buy them. And I'm guilty of this myself. Other people, like most people are, most people will have bought a microtransaction here and there. If the game isn't complete without it, then how can you blame the consumer for doing it? Um, so, I, I don't know. I just think it's kind of a skewed argument. It, it keeps coming back up. And it's kind of skewed to just say that a game is, is still only 40 or £50 pounds to buy new when they already they have already cut out pieces of the game and all that sort of stuff. So, that's enough of me. If you want to watch a properly good video on it, I would recommend you going across to Jim Sterling's channel and watching a few of their videos on um on this subject so getting a bit lighter the next story the cinemas now hiring out their streams their screens to gamers not much to say on this just saying it's kind of cool that cinemas an old sort of medium very old medium is looking at ways of expanding their industry into this new medium of video games all that sort of stuff you can hire out these screens um in korea um and you can go and play video games on them for a couple of hours on these huge screens. So the auditoriums, so it only costs around $90 for two hours, which is honestly so cheap. That's so cheap. Um, and you can play, go and play games on these huge screens. Uh, it's just kind of awesome. I like it. 
I just wanted to bring that in positively, you know, after the, after the, after my rant a little bit. Um, but yeah, it's it's kind of cool to see this, and obviously cinemas are going to have to adapt hugely if they're going to keep in the industry because you know that industry's sort of dying right now, and with COVID, it's close to death. So bringing this in, it's good to see, and I do like it. And finally, IKEA releases an esports furniture collection to democratize the gaming experience. So this is supposed to come out in October, and have a look at a few of these pieces here. And they don't look too bad, you know. And honestly, I think this is a good thing. Cheap video game desks and chairs um, and products. Obviously, they're a huge company. It's mass-produced. It's IKEA. But you know what you're getting with IKEA. And you know it's going to be cheap and reasonable. It's not going to just fall apart, most likely. Um, so, yeah. They've got a few desks, which, I don't know, they kind of look a bit goofy, but... For the price, they haven't released the price yet. That's the big thing. If if they come out and the price is the same as everyone else's price, then it's it's pointless. Don't 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 buy them. <laughs> but if it comes out, it's a lot cheaper. I definitely think it's a good idea. Definitely make it cheaper for a lot of gamers out there to get the desk, get the gaming chair. You know, I don't even have a gaming chair. Look at this. <laughs> I'm just on a normal chair. Um, but yeah, it's kind of interesting that IKEA, this huge furniture company, is moving into this. They obviously see this as a growing and a growing space and a space that they've neglected. Um, and I think a lot of the sort of gaming accessory companies will have to look out for this going into the future. So I just wanted to to mention that last one um, as we as we finish up the video. So thank you very much, guys, for watching. This has been Bloombark News. See what I did there. Um, I hope you enjoyed. Please do leave your comments down below on the old uh, classic debate of video game prices and anything else you had opinions on. I mean, especially the pigs. That's the, that is definitely the most interesting story of today, okay? Definitely. So comment on that. All right. Thank you very much, guys. Hopefully, I'll see you again on another video.